I said, I don't want to talk to prospects where they can walk all over me. I want to be able to have control over the conversations. Like it's, if you're single, believe me, you are selling. Okay, you absolutely need to sell. In fact, if you're single, chances are you need to work on your closing skill. We don't sell, we turn the prospect into a salesperson. There was one story, the one more story I want, I want to share during the period of time. So as a, as a copywriter, so I was trying to close clients, talking to them with on the phone and things like that. And then it was one particular phone call, and I always remember that phone call, that I was talking with a prospect, okay? And he found me on, on internet and we were talking and he's asking me about my cooperating services. Okay, a few minutes into the phone call, he said, stop! I said, uh, what's going on? Stop! He said, you're full of shit. I said, what? He said, since the beginning of the phone call, you've already made like multiple grammatical errors. I don't think you're that good of a copywriter. You cannot be. And he hung up on me. Well, I hope you learned your <gasps> And I was shocked. I was hurt. And I actually cried after the phone call. I'm okay with rejection, but I have never felt something like that before. And from that moment on, I vouched to myself, I will never ever want to experience this again. That's actually from copywriting, why I kind of throw myself into learning sales. I said, I don't want to talk to prospects where they can walk all over me. I want to be able to have control over the conversations. From then on, I was, this is how I kind of transitioned into learning an additional skill, not just copywriting, writing copy, right? But also closing. And I didn't know that from then on, like fast forward today, that I would be teaching sales and, and closing persuasion to so many students around the world, but that planted a seed in my mind. I wanna zero in on the closers part of it. And as you know, from our previous conversation as well, yes. I uh, kind of have a soft spot in my in my heart for, for sales. Get door to door sales, yes. Door to door, man, for a long time. And yes. uh, what I've found, cause I've taken so many sales trainings and yes. I never really fully resonated with a lot of them mm. because of the, a uh, common denominator that you and I share of not liking the old school closer mentality yes. Yes. Um, that is more becoming outdated, especially with the age of information. Correct. And I think that if you're holding on to those old school closer tactics, that you're probably going to be pushed out of the equation here really quickly. Correct. Correct. So can you give us just an idea of, of, of what that means practically and just maybe top one or two tips to help anybody that's listening to this right now be a better salesperson? Yes. So the methodology that I pioneer is called high ticket closing because that's what I've been always doing in my whole career, selling high ticket products or services. If you're selling something like at a dollar store for 10, 20 bucks or in the mall versus you're selling something for five, 10, 20, 50, 100K, it's a completely different thing. It's a different sale, right? Because you're not selling just the item, you're actually selling the emotions, the experience, right? So my whole methodology in the simplistic term is this, we don't sell, we turn the prospect into a salesperson. So we let the prospect do most of the talking, right? Because I believe that when you say something, it means something. When the prospect says something, it means everything. So instead of us pushing features and benefit, why you should buy and all that, right? I would ask questions because whoever asks the questions controls the conversation. And from now on, I ask the questions. Sit down. Now just a Sit down. And then we will lead the prospects to the sales. So every single thing that we're asking during a sales conversation, we're leading them to the sale, but without them feeling we're pushing them. So you know how, Jarvis, you read like traditional sales books, oh man, 37 ways to close a sale or uh, 1,057 ways to, to close something. I'm like, th this is like reading a book on martial art, 1,007 ways to throw a, a, a kick. I'm like, if your kick is good, one kick would be enough, right? So I'm a kind of one kick kind of guy. You know, my, my closing line, like my most favorite, what would you like to do next? I don't do the AB clothes, like the puppy dog clothes, and then you, I don't do any of that. Said, what would you like to do next? That's my closing line. What I do is very invisible. So by the time they get to the closing uh, stage, the, when we are ready to transact, they want to do it. Not because like I push them. Another thing I do, most sales guys, they wait till the end to talk about money. The way I teach, you talk about money up front. So almost everything I do is just the opposite. Uh, most sales method, they talk about 
uh, establishing report in the beginning, right? How's the weather? Oh, where you live? And oh, how are the kids? I call that pretentious report. You don't give a shit, they don't give a shit. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. We don't do any of that. Instead of going in, you have the what I call the doctor frame. You don't shoot the breeze. You don't you don't be you know talk about BS. You get to the why you're on the call. So I like to do like what I call set the agenda. Like I, I will say something like this example. Instead of hey how's the weather? Hey Travis, it's good to see. Like all this stuff, it's so it's so fake. I would go right into it. I would say something like example. Just let's say give you an example, right? Hey Travis, uh, I can see that you book a time with me and I'm happy that we're having this conversation. Exactly what do you want to get out of this call today? I just go into it, right? And then you would say, oh, you know, Dan, what I want to do is A, B, C, and D. Then I would write up front, set agenda, something like this. I say, hey, Travis, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, by the end of our conversations, you could say a couple things to me. You could say yes, which is good. That means I could help you, right? That can, we can move forward. And that's, that's good. You could say no, and I want you to know it's perfectly okay to say no to me. You take the pressure off. Now, the third thing that you could say, which I don't want you to, is maybe, or I want to think about it. Because from my experience, when someone tells me I want to think about it, or maybe, what they mean is no. I prefer just tell me a no. Could we agree on that before we move forward? Now I'll set the agenda. Now, by the end of my conversation, they're not going to tell me a maybe. I do that in the beginning. I, all, I want to handle all of that before it even comes up. So that's just like one tiny bit of example. That's perfect. That's a perfect example. So if anybody uh, wants to learn a little bit more from Dan, which like I said, I've taken a ton of sales trainings and if I would recommend anybody sales trainings, it would probably be Dan. So um, I appreciate yeah, where, that. Where, can people, where can people go to, to find that? Now, the easiest way is just go to highticketclosers.com. They can watch a free webinar, right? And they'll get some information. Now, they're not going to get the training from the webinar. I want to be absolutely transparent. But it gives an overview of the program, uh, kind of like a preview, right? If they want to, then they can take the, our seven-week uh, certification program, which is interesting. Travis, the way I teach, uh, I train is I would teach them the techniques, and then we have our community, now over 10,000 students worldwide. Uh, they would role play. I call that a verbal dojo. You learn a technique, and then you will actually connect with all the other students, and you would role play. Right? How do you open? How do you set the agenda? How do you close? And this is the only way to get good because reading a script, it, it, that's not what this is. You notice the way I sell, I don't use a script at all. Yeah, right. I do not believe in scripts at all. High, highticketclosers.com for those of you who want to perfect your sales ability. And if this is not something that you're confident in, it is of paramount importance if you're going to generate money, especially online and especially these days. Um, you got to be able to uh, stand out from all the other bad salespeople that exist. And think about like Travis, what, what your show is about. It's about building a network, right? I always say closing equals income. It doesn't matter if you're selling a product or service or you're selling yourself or you're connecting with somebody. You're closing all the time. It doesn't matter if you're in business or not in business, right? Or well, your parents have kids, you're selling your kids. Veggie, not chocolate. Do your homework, don't watch TV. You're selling all the time, right? It's, if you're single, believe me, you are selling. Okay, you absolutely need to sell. In fact, if you're single, chances are you need to work on your closing skill. So it's like all these things, it's not about closing. It's interesting because I have so many students who come through my program. It's not just they're selling something. It helps them improve their relationships because to be a good closer, the number one skill is actually not talking. It's listening. They learn to listen. And in our society, people don't know how to listen. Now I'm doing an interview. So I'm saying I'm talking a lot, but if I'm actually having conversation, you'll notice I actually talk very little. My entire conversation will be just asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. It's not even a, a sales skill, I think it's a life skill.